So now today, uh, my talk will be mostly on the uh, healthcare application. So uh, I have developed a robot that I would like to show you. Uh, basically, I have worked in the human-robot in, uh, interactions for the medical robotics field. And uh, I visited these places in Japan and other things. So now the uh, topic that I have chosen, this is a, uh, how, how do you uh, redefine healthcare using artificial uh, intelligence, uh, keeping uh, this responsibility at the center. So mostly I'm going to talk about this is a, what is the responsible AI means and uh, the techniques that are, we are going to use. So how much responsibility that we would put forward so that it must be, uh, I mean, trustable and trustworthy facilities has to be there. So my, the, the storage question that I have put that uh, I'll give the answer at the end of my talk. That what if an AI could warn you about a disease before you experience a single symptom? So should you listen? So this is the question so that I'm asking to all the audience. So actually this question uh, is not a science fiction anymore. So it reflects the reality of modern healthcare where artificial intelligence is becoming uh, this uh, essential partner in uh, clinical uh, decision making abilities, then uh, uh, population, uh, healthcare management, diagnosis, and also this engaging the patients. But when you talk about this, how to engage the patient, so this trust is coming into these pictures. So now, if uh, we cannot ask that uh, whether this AI can revolutionize healthcare, so rather, uh, if we can ask ourselves, uh, that uh, how we can ensure that this AI does so ethically, so uh, safely and so transparently. So these are the important things that, that I would like to focus. So this is this, uh, is the AI is the new reality. So now in every day or in, uh, I mean, AI systems are embedded uh, in our day-to-day -day life. And, uh, and it is also healthcare is not an exception. That uh, we must have seen that uh, uh, AI can predict this is a, uh, I mean, health risk or heart risk uh, failure by using some our, uh, I mean, smartwatch data. And also that it can scans. This is a MRI scans can accurately be done. And many things can be done by using this AI. So there are a lot of challenges are also involved. But uh, if we can think, if but in this today's platform, if we can think one question, so as AI uh, sits uh, just uh, to the doctors, if I or these nurses or any others, uh, I mean uh, uh, physiologists, then we must think one thing. That is a how you are going to put this. Uh, I mean, trustworthy has to be maintained. So. These are the different impact of AI that uh, uh, we would be talking about. Uh, uh, that is, this, uh, it reduces this workload uh, of these uh, clinicians and uh, how to make a good uh, decision making uh, systems and so on. So these are the uh, tools, I mean, uh, sensors that we are using in my lab. Uh, mostly there are other sensors are also available. That is a IMU sensor that uh, most of you that uh, you have already seen in our mobile phones, the accelerometer and gyroscope is also there. You can find the linear acceleration and the angular velocities and all, all sort of things. I am using the EEG signals, that is the brain signals to connect. Uh, so there is a close connectivity from the brain and the motion. Okay, and uh, we are trying to find the correlations between this human brain to this walking pattern. Because uh, as you most uh, must have seen, so there is a disease is called the Parkinson disease. And other disease is called the cerebral palsy. So when, uh, how we are going to make some precautionary measurements, uh, if you can understand this gait pattern, okay? So we are capturing these brain signals by using this uh, EEG headset, which is there in my lab, and trying to, f and we are also capturing this walking pattern. Person is walking on the treadmill, and at that time, some kind of external stimulus are being uh, projected on, the, on this monitor, and, and we are capturing this data. 
Now from this brain signal, or we are, uh, from the electrodes that we are getting, and from this walking pattern that is being captured from different sensors or images. Okay. Then uh, we are trying to find the relation that uh, what effect that we are going to have when the person is having some deformity. So can I have some relations between these our cognitions to our motions? So this is a very interesting study of work, and it helps this doctor uh, to listen whether we should listen to AI, that AI should recommend some diagnosis or some treatment. Okay. So now one thing is that I would like to say. If we, are, uh, if we are using this black box, the trust collapses. So only black box model, if, if your model is only black box, the trust collapses. So we should develop by our own sentiment, by our own experiences, we need to write our <coughs> programs, then accordingly it will work in a very nice manner. So this things that uh, so we are doing, so why responsible AI? So the term is responsible is, is depend on these four different pillars. One is called the safety. So the, the responsible AI that ensures this every decision has to be clinically proven. Second is it monitors these errors where this we human that used to neglect. Third one is that is a human oversight. So the responsible AI is taking care of all these things. So this is called the safety. Second pillar that I would like to say that is called this, uh, I mean, trust and transparency. So this, sometimes the doctor should, I mean, must understand that if AI recommends something, so we should listen to AI, that why that AI should, uh, I mean, recommend something. Third one, it is called this, your fairness. So this, if your system is biased, if your model is biased, you are going to have this bias output. So we need to think about it, that how to mitigate this biasness. So there are a lot of techniques are available that we used to apply to, uh, I mean, model how to, I mean, remove the biases from this model. And fourth one is called, that is called, I mean, uh, accountability. So accountability is very important part because every AI models that we are going to develop, that has to be accountable and it should process some chain of responsibility. So that is very important. So we are not going to replace any clinicians. So we are going to use AI as a partner. So that is the most uh, important thing. So that the responsible AI ensures every de decision has to be safe, it has to be transparent, and it has to be guided by a clinician. Then only we can redefine our healthcare. So, um, so I have already talked about uh, everything. So now this AI, so there are different tools are available. So nowadays we are working in this field of deep, uh, deep neural architectures. And there is agentic AI, there's this uh, a few, few uh, speakers has already talk, I mean, talk about. But I would say that uh, we are not here to listen to any hypothetical model. You can see in any hospitals, there is a real systems are already available. <coughs> okay? But how to use this real system, so this, how to ensure this trustworthy, how to ensure its ethicality, so that needs to be proven first. Then only we can develop any, any responsible AI based system. So uh, this uh, next, I would say, so this is the robot that uh, I, my, me and my team has developed. Uh, that is, that I have named the robot is called the carrot. Uh, that is our brainchild. This is a caregiver, uh, autism uh, robot with AI based techniques. So now uh, mostly that uh, in, because I belong, uh, because I'm from Raukella. So in this, in the Raukella, we are in the sector 17, so we are having a one, Center is called the Home and Hope, Autistic Child Children's Centers. So I visited there and we are having collaboration with them. And this robot that uh, we have deployed, it can communicate with them. This is a specially disabled children, I mean special children. So we cannot that say that these are the special, these are very, they are very, very intelligent that I would say because I have interacted many times. And so our objective is how to improve their social and behavioral skills. So this robot is not being used as an assistant. So this is used as a collaborator. That is my question. Okay. So this robot is being as a collaborator. It is helping the clinicians that how to help the children to improve their social and behavioral skill through human robot interactions. So we are using two different modalities. One is called the verbal communications. Another is called this non-verbal communication. 
So in this non-verbal communication, we are using simply one uh, camera. We are trying to capture this, uh, I mean, trying to understand the emotion of these, first, these students or emotion of the children who are coming in front of this robot or they are doing some gestures. I mean, they are just trying to communicate with each other, trying to communicate their teachers or the caregiver by, by the gestures. So this robot is trying to understand these two different modalities and giving the skills, I mean, uh, I mean giving these interpretations, how these things can be, I mean, uh, interpreted. So, and this entire things has to be embedded into ACE devices because the algorithms that, that we have developed we have developed, it is not a standalone system, so we have just transferred it in a very lightweight deep learning model, those who are working in this field. So we are using in the lightweight deep learning model and how to transfer this lightweight deep learning model into a ACE devices. We are using NVIDIA, uh, Jetson Nano, so this is a very latest technology and I mean devices, then, then accordingly all the computations can be done, I mean in the, in the real time fashions and uh, this, uh, I mean this testing that we have done as you can see, that is this, uh, this student is doing some kind of gestures, his robot is trying to, I mean, tease them. So if the student is doing some wrong gestures, then through some verbal communication it is saying, so you are doing the wrong gestures, please do the correct one. Unless and until this ASD children is going to uh, do the correct gestures, so this process is repetitive. So it inspires us to understand and it is just, it is just engaging them at all the time uh, so means so that through the engagement process, it is an educational engagement process, so their social and behavioral skills are to be improved in a rapid manner. So we have already applied for the patent for, for uh, my work. And there's a uh, last work that we are doing, uh, it is my lab, how a sensor-based technology can be used for detecting this musculoskeletal diseases. So one of the musculoskeletal diseases is called the Parkinson diseases or we would say this is called the cerebral palsy and any other categories. So our model is trying to collect this data and trying to predict after the injuries has been done, so how much recovery that has been done. So there are different things, it's called the rehabilitation engineering. So when the person is uh, having some surgery, then after surgery, uh, how much, I mean, re recovery has been observed, so only doctor can say yes, so, so you are fit, then you can work. But actually, I mean, scientifically, how you are going to ensure it? So now this model, our AI-based assessment tool will help us that after surgery or after, I mean, rehabilitation procedures, it will say, so that much percentage, this person has already fit to work in a better battlefield. Because this, uh, this work that I am collaborating with the DRDO, one of the defense projects, so that uh, I'm just doing, doing with them. So this is the things. And um, uh, last quotation from my side, we can, use AI by, as, as I, I am working in this field for the last 10 years, I feel that the future of healthcare is not this AI versus human. So uh, it is actually AI plus human that will give it to this better health for everyone. So to make a futuristic AI based healthcare system, I would, uh, it is my opinion that uh, we, AI should not replace the human touch. Okay, AI should augment this human expertise. Thank you so much.